It's pretty much the exact opposite for our guest tonight. I was a huge fan of the start, subsequently over the course of several albums. <laughs> Uh, at least that's the start with just something always, nasty. Always, always. Just to remind you, man. You just keep bringing me down. Just to take you back in the day. Yeah. I am the anchors around your shoes. It's good. I need people like you. What's going on? Well, good. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, playing in the shadows, the new album out this come Monday. Moody. It's moody, isn't it? I like it. She's like the back. So the back's even moodier. Moodier. <laughs> moodier. Uh, example, a round of applause for our studio guest tonight. He's taking Thank some you. time out of his always busy schedule to pop into Radio 1. We're going to play a piece of music which hasn't been played on radio yet. No? Called Midnight Run from a really guest-heavy, you know, producer-heavy record. A lot of collaborations on this album. Hmm. Um, but I think it all flows nicely. I got, it really does. I did make a point of getting the same guy to mix down the whole album, except for Chase and Status, who wouldn't let anyone touch their stems. That's not how they roll. That's not how they roll. I was like, come on, everyone on this album's getting mixed down by... Right? No. No, 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 not us. See, Chase is all right with it, but Status... Nah, not Status so is not happy about <laughs> it. He's not having it, mate. Yeah, yeah, not Chase is just like, he's straight away, he's like, oh, I don't really Chase care. Chase Status? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just They're call them Chase and Status. They're the same person. Whenever I see them, I'm like, what's up, Chase and Status? <laughs> to both of them. To each one. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, big album. It is. It's really big. <laughs> That's that humble magnificence we've come to expect from the boy over here, from our kid. Um, mate, it's a really big sounding record. And it, Thank and you. It, you know, it's, uh, it delivers on what you've been promising throughout. There's, you know, the stories are in there, the wordplay's in there. But as the songs and the, the beats and the productions and the ideas and the ambitions have gotten bigger, you needed a record to back that up. And playing in the shadow sounds to me, from what I've heard, sounds like the one. Thank you. I mean, I've chatted, I've, actually, I've, this is about my 17th interview of the day. Um, oh, but well, the one thanks. I've been looking for, the one I've been looking forward to the most. And uh, some girl said to me today, and I was, it was just, you know, she was like, it was quite weird because like Blur's first album showed a bit of promise and the second one was them sort of experimenting and the third one they really kind of found out what they were doing and <laughs> I kind of feel like you're the same and I was like what the same as Blur and she went no you're nowhere near as good as Blur <laughs> but uh, it's your third album and you kind of know what you're doing I was like thanks for that well I can start being nice to you because it sounds like someone's being meaner can we, inter can we end this interview now please I was like no this one can carry on I was going to say as you see I have my fingers on the <laughs> any excuse <laughs> can we end this interview now Oh my lord! There we go. Killed it. Um, we're gonna mold some butts. Who? Would you like Blur's third album or my third album more? <laughs> <laughs> don't answer that. I'm not going to answer that question. I don't even want to answer Blur's don't third put me, album. Don't put me on the spot like that. Okay. I need to live with this a little more. Could be a grow it. No, it's a great sounding record. It's out this coming Monday. It's going to be next week's album of the week. We are being filmed right now live on the web. So if you want to watch it, go to the Radio One web page. I've got my web hair on. You changed your hair. Yeah. This was about seven, eight months ago. You started pushing it down. Yeah, it's just, you know what I mean? You're, it, losing, you're losing a little something thought, under there? You're losing a little something under I'm there? Laying, I'm laying my soul bare on this album, so I should just be like a blank canvas and no hair product. I don't know what that means. It looks good. That sounds like a marketing statement. It looks good. I think it's the best haircut you've had. <laughs> I mean, I think the quiff was getting crazy. Yeah. You were heading into Jedward territory at one point. No, 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 no. Come on, man. It was getting a little crazy. Yeah, because I'm not Jedward because I haven't done any covers ever. Really? Got well, a live lounge. There you go. <laughs> what have you done in the live lounge? I did Arctic Monkeys, didn't I? Oh, that's right. That don't see down because you moved you. You did Firework. Uh, no. Didn't you? A Teenage Dream. You blew my socks off with that. Did you like that oh, one? That was amazing. Thanks for that, man. That's when I realised this. I think I texted you after that. You did, and you went, wow, you can sing, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I realised that you can sing. Thanks. Tell us about this track. We're going to play exclusive. Midnight Run. Yep. It was, like I think, right towards the end of the album. It was produced by Feed Me. If people don't know about him, he used to be Spore, the drum and bass producer. Yep. He is signed to Mousetrap, which is Dead Mouse's label in the States. Very talented guy. Still quite young. Mm -hmm. He called me around his house. He said, come around my mum and dad's house. I recorded my bedroom. And we did. We recorded his bedroom. I wrote the song on his bed. Not in that sort of way. He was on a seat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... Did, I you wrote... cross, did you cross your legs? Fold yeah, your legs? definitely. And we sort of wrote the whole song in about two hours. And then a week later, he sent me the finished product. And I was like, ooh, wow. <laughs> That's genuine. Is that how you really said it? Yeah, no. I, we couldn't decide whether the song should be 130 BPM, which mm. is like mm. house, mm. or 140, which is dubstep. So we set it on 135. Well, it's, it's an untapped BPM. It's, it's underrated. It's an interesting fact it's, if it you like BPMs. It won't get played in the clubs by the purists. Thanks. <laughs> they don't go above 134 or below 136. Thanks. So you're right smack dab in the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Thursday night. Y'all better get ready. And it's about 7.30 PM, and my man Zayn is about to put on the <laughs> Hottest record. Uh, <laughs> exclusive. That's example. Midnight Run, produced by Feed Me, and that is bad.
No, bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good. Thanks, man. I love that, man. That's a great. That's record. one of my favorites on the album. I'm glad you picked that one. One of the tracks that uh, one of the things that seems to thread through the record as well, if I could just keep a, get a little bit uh, serious for a second, is that uh, you don't stand still in any of the songs. I mean, that you know, you're constantly flipping between half time, double time, changing it up, moving things around. You know. Yeah, I, I kind of did that a, f- a few times on the last album. Um, but not enough, I don't think. And then people seem to like it because it was like, I kind of feel like I'm influenced by everything, mm. by drum and bass and rock and dubstep and rap and grime. So just just throw it in together. And producers love it because most people, you know, most producers are like, told, we want a dubstep song. Yeah, we, we want to go to Guy Chambers so you can yeah, do Angels. We want right, a pop right, right. song yeah. or we want this. So I went to Feed Me, I said, look, let's do it one through five. And I said, can we have a 16 bar rap in there, which is like your your sound, your yeah. dubstep house sound. And he was just like, you yes, serious? Sir. Like, can I do that? I was like, yeah, of course you can. He was like, but what if it might be a single? I was like, no, put that in. And then these producers are like, cool. And then like, it's the same with like Laidback Luke. I was like, can we stick that little break in there? Like, yeah. you know, so I can do a kind of my old school garage flow on it. And the producers on this album, I loved it. Like, never had a day, another track. Mm-hmm. Said to DC Breaks, you know, the whole song's 140 BPM dubstep. I said, this is going to jungle at the end. He goes, what? Time stretch to 150. I was like, yeah. So these producers, everyone in the album's like, cool, like free reign, do what you You're want. You're loving it, man, aren't you? Yeah. And the collaborations and the songwriting. God, you've come far, mate. From dough balls at Pizza Express to here, it's an incredible <laughs> I remember journey. the first time you played that, you were like, I love that, I love that line. I love that. Yeah, it wasn't for long. No. I'm glad you moved on. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have been kidding. That's why I put that tweet up yesterday when you were like, I've just done Celebrity Whatever with this, this, Celebrity this, this. Juice, And yeah. I was like, this sounds like one of your old raps. Yeah. Because it was so, it was so like observational what you were doing back in the day. And now you you seem to have, you know, decided to uh, to go a little I'm kind of open up. Like, I, I was, I was observational before, but now I'm kind of like more speaking from the heart. Yeah. So everything, this is the most personal album I've ever written. Tegan wants you to marry her or him. I'm not sure. It could go either way there. <laughs> I love Elliot's hair. That's from the 937. Sing example on December 1st. Oh, that's from Tegan again. Watch mm. out. You don't stop touring. We know this because, look, there's some tour dates. Can I just say, <laughs> quick plug, everywhere sold out except for Brighton and Swindon. Woo! So get down there now. And uh, we'll be doing arenas next April. You'll be pleased to know. See, Brighton is, your Brighton's my leads. <laughs> always, really? always struggling Why don't like your Leeds? Always struggling Leeds. They don't get the Kiwi accent in Leeds. That's racist. Now... <laughs> little gracist, somewhere in the middle. Now, what I want to do is I want to open up examples, artwork, and I want to tell you what we've learned before we, before we mould some clay butts. Included lyrics for once. Included lyrics. Yep. Old move. Proud. Proud of what you've said on this record. Yep. That's a good sign. Have you noticed any typos or anything wrong? Yeah, there is a few. <laughs> yeah. We're going to change them for the next run. Um, I always love that. We've just printed, I think, 80,000 of them. So, Yo, was that Mr. Jam? It's Mr. Jam's in the album sleeve. Um, Ed Sheeran's in there. Yep. Wretch is in there. Nahal, are you in there? No, no, he's not in there. Am I in there? Why am I in there? Am I in there? No, you're not. What up? Because we've never had a picture together. No, you've never had an ice lolly together. Is that what it takes to get in the inner sleeve of your of your arm? Well, you want us to like share a stick? That was a snowball, man. That was a good ice lolly. You want us to throw down a stick? <laughs> we, gonna, we gonna hit some sticks? I sound like Muttley. You do sound a little like Muttley. It's a nice picture of you and Jam. Yeah. Nice picture of Ed Sheeran. What's gonna happen on Sunday, boy? Do you know what? We're, we're doing uh, this uh, winner buys dinner thing. <laughs> so um, uh, we, we agreed to this about a month Should ago. Should we do this after versus tonight in the hall? Uh, yeah, win, buy- winner <laughs> buys dinner. Yes. And uh, so if I'm number one, which at the moment looks ne- likely. I hate to break it to Ed Sheeran, but in case he's wondering, there's no mystery here. You'll be going to Nando's. No, okay. no, no. Because no. we've both got free Nando's cards. We said, let's go Strada. It's a bit up my market. So Strada it is. Um, look out for me and Ed next week. I think we're going Monday night to a Strada in London somewhere. Okay. And, Look out for us. We'll be having the spaghetti. Look out for us. Come say what's up. I'll be on Come pesto sh- bread. Say what's up, y'all. <laughs> Come share a bruschetta. <laughs> Ed Sheeran will always pay. Ed bruschetta. He don't need you, man. He don't need me. Oh, oh, oh no. no. And the thing was, man, you were so ready to drop that. You rushed it. <laughs> Did I? You rushed it. Oh, from the king of comedy timing over there. Yep. <laughs> Zane McIntyre. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, okay. so there you go. Winner buys dinner. It's a new thing. So it's there win- you go. Look out for Ed Sheeran an example. as a strider near you. <laughs> go share a bruschetta. All right, there's more some butts. What is going on? You know what's going on here. Let's break this down for the people at home. You can, we can see us molding butts right here. This is the most exciting thing to listen to ever, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, and, uh, he's obviously thrown his head in the ring as the king of comedy as well. So. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's got grown a sense of humour since his last record. Oh! oh. <laughs> I've got more boring. I used to be funnier. Okay, so uh, Nick Grimshaw's come up with this idea where he wants uh, a whole bunch of radio DJs. Sorry, bro, I roped you in. But effectively, you are a radio DJ right now. Yeah. Uh, to mold some clay, and it was going to be life-size butt replicas mar- plastered. Have you been roped in on this? 
No. Dude, you know in the club, you know in the mold. How's over these fruit like? No, no. What do you mean you don't want me to mold butts? <laughs> so they want us to mold some butts, and then they want to hand them out to various artists that are nominated for a Mercury Music Prize, and uh, and they're called the Uranus Awards. You said quite funnily before that this is the closest I'll ever get to the Mercury. <laughs> Unless I feature on Speech to Bell's next album, we'll see. We, uh, we, we love your example. <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right, I'm started. I'm molding butts right here. Oh, hang on. Are we going? <laughs> We're going in. I need some water. And he doesn't a... even recognise the reference point. He obviously hasn't seen the movie Ghost. Of course too... I've seen Ghost. Well, then what's up, son? I'm playing Righteous Brothers. You're not even crying right now. I'm 29. I'm trying to create the, the right cheek at the moment. Sorry. It's all right. So I've gone in for the flat approach. And I'm just going to... Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I need is a pen. There we go, flat approach. I'm going to get a pen right here, and I'm going to start to create my crack. Are these actually going into the kiln afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> Are they? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're going to be... Crack. For real? This is harder than I thought it would be, man. Hang on. I need to, the crack needs to be wider. Mine is the butt of someone who's been sat on a few rocks. <laughs> Have you gone for moldy butt? Yeah. Have you gone for old man butt? <laughs> Zane, yours definitely is not... <laughs> it's not looking like a butt right yours now. Yours is more like a front butt. What? <laughs> <laughs> Easy, son. <laughs> Family show. Right, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Now, no, 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 because this is where it gets serious. This is where it gets serious here. This is where I push it all together, and it just all of a sudden magically becomes a butt. Dude, uh, this is, dude, this is such a low. This is probably the worst this thing I've ever done. This is one of the worst things I've ever been subjected to. I'm serious. I don't expect it from your show. Dude, don't ask me, man. It was Grimshaw. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't even expect it on his I'm show. I'm not ready to show the butt. Can you stop telling me to show the butt? I'm not ready. It's, I'm not happy with it. Mine's more like a butthole. I can't do I can't do this. I genuinely can't. I've, I've finished mine. I can't, okay, go on. Okay. Oh, my God. That looks really realistic. Yeah. It's the like, talent. It's, it's, the, that's amazing. I've, I've realised as well, if you just put, lick your finger a bit. Okay, so this has been fun. It's been good to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for my clay butt moulding amigo, the one and only Go Ball Eaten, heartbreaking, <laughs> hair pushing down, hit making, clay butt creating, homie, the stromy, the doo-doo man. Example! <laughs>